Hello. Ay, 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 ay. <clears throat> Sorry, I was eating right before. It's a boy. <laughs> oh my god. That's a very appropriate uh, emo emo em uh, emoji for you, Koi. Fantastic. Emote. That's an emote. Emote of E. <laughs> it's perfect. It's real rep it's a real fish representation. By God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
still munching a little bit. Make sure I'm nice and full so I don't get hungry halfway through stream. shine or is it greasy it has a shine to it that white that you see is the little bit of white hair from the cat boy that I fused with <clears throat> the cat boy had had white hair white ears and maybe a white tail yeah we'll go with white tail and I I have no tail because that part did not get fused in Maybe in a later design it'll get fused in, I don't know. No. <laughs> no, no. In fiction, a lot of a lot of characters that have white hair are not necessarily old. White hair can be natural. It's fiction, goddammit. Okay. Let's get started. Turn down the music a little bit. Better. And what we're gonna do this evening is we're gonna look at uh, early and cut content from the games that I've played for the past couple of weeks. And I checked the pages for each of these games that I've played. Some of the pages don't even some of the pages don't even exist for some of these games, like NBA Street one through three. Don't they don't have a page? All of the um, dirt bike games don't have a page, which kind of sucks, because they're fun games, despite how janky they are. But uh, the one that I did manage to find was Hydro Thunder. I fucking love this game. It's a boat racing game. If you've ever played Wave Race 64, it's like that, but up-res all of the graphics and replace the, uh, the, the ski doos with, um, uh, like, super, like, hyper-speed boats. I played it on, uh, I played it on stream a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago? Either way, I played it on stream before. It's on my YouTube VOD channel. Right now, I know you're already subscribed to it, but hey, it, it never hurts to get into the habit of uh, using Nightbot to plug that. Any butt. <laughs> so, this is an incorrect statement. Here, hold on, let me. That is an incorrect statement. <laughs> it is a fucking awesome game. It's so much fun. There we go. So all of this text I've already looked at, and it's not very interesting, sadly. There is a test map, though. To access, I have played Attack on Chernobyl, Attack on Chernobyl 2, and Attack on Chernobyl 3. Racing. What the fuck? To access the test map, simply known as test. Oh, okay. So it's still in the game files. And it just looks like this. Like, nothing much happens in it, I guess. The starting area. Oh, that's funny. Oh, look, it's where, it's where you enter your initials at. Noise. Uh, 
3D text that reads Wipeout. Crashing into it will cause your boat to flip out. That's weird. A couple ramps. I wish there was a video to look, to look at all this. The other end of the map. Okay, yeah, so it's just a giant pool of water. The map is a large rectangular area containing a few objects at the start. There's numbers that go from 0 to 11 along the length of the map. The water becomes more choppy as you progress to the other side of the map. One of the computer players will drive to the other side of the map. That's weird. Unused graph coming soon! Present among the track selection graphics is a coming soon graphic, likely a leftover from the demo version of the game, which I would have loved to play. And I guess this was like what the beta or early version of the speedometer looked like, which honestly I like how gritty it looks. That sort of low poly metal texture. An earlier version of the HUD graphics. Yeah, that's it. I just, that's an actual super, like hyper speedboat. Oh, yeah, play and it, it's all it, it was used as a placeholder title screen. Placeholder title. Oh wait. Sent some test graphics likely meant for a menu. Ugh, that red on green looks too Christmassy. Loading test track. Coup de ramps, the highest mountain made of tires in France. Oh, that's weird. This one that I, this one I've been curious to look at is this purple texture right here. I hope it's just the purple texture and not... Oh, it is just the purple texture. Wonderful. Dang it, I hate how small they are. Looks like there's a face on it. Look, like little two eyes, smiley face. Hi! That's not, I made this fact now. Oh, you made it up. Your source is that you made it the fuck up! <laughs> He's like, hey! That's really cute. Also, I love the purple behind it. <laughs> Just stretch this over the back of my stream. <laughs> What's up, guys? I got a new background. I hope you like it. It's just this, but stretched out. The purple texture looks like some alien. It does look a little bit like an alien, yeah. I guess these are like explosion textures with some green on them. Yeah. I keep forgetting how low res these textures are. That do be looking like wood, some caution, some rocks, more rocks, rocks. That looks like a rainstorm. A little bit. There's some explosion fire, some clovers. Anybody, anybody want some clover? Maybe cloves. Are clovers and cloves the same? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look into it. I don't want to get distracted. <laughs> a beta version of a wrong way sign. A runway graphic that is never used since the game automatically turns you in the right direction if you try to go the wrong way. Oh, clover texture, why? That's a good question. Oh, okay. Three development related graphics. <laughs> that an that answers some questions. Some hidden notes. <gasps> Yo. Oh, the texture for the fisherman in the chum dinger boat has some notes which are never seen in game. Side, arm, shoulders with a pipe. That's funny. That's yeah, fine. Actually, I'm turning it up a little bit. There. Man, face scare. Uh, yeah, for real. Like, you can't even see his actual face. It's very creepy. Agreed, Koi. Agreed. Okay, so. Um, the There are, like, four different versions of Hydro Thunder, and they each have different stuff on them. So we're gonna go into the three other different types of- th three other different versions of Hydro Thunder, and, um, the versions of, of Off-Road Thunder and Arctic Thunder, which Arctic Thunder was the first game in my, um, PS2 playthrough, and I think I have it as a VOD. Yeah, I do have it as a VOD. It was, it was the first PS2 VOD that I, that I made. So I'll be covering that as well, since I haven't done it yet. I don't think I have. We'll see. PlayStation 1 version of Hydro Thunder, which I also have. Zip file on the root disk contains assorted model files for Lake Powell and Arctic Circle. 
Uh, judging by the file extensions, Blue Shift seems to have used open flight during development. I don't know what the fuck that means. Present in the game are two unused tracks which can be accessed using the Game Shark code. Uh, that. And that's just a white abyss, which is so creepy. Mostly untextured version of the Catacombs track. Test John. John, test! John Test tests John. Oh, we got a piano. We got a piano piece. And as soon as Spotify Mobile loads, I will tell y'all who it is. By. Damn it. Oh, it's Tchaikovsky. It is Tchaikovsky. We love Tchaikovsky around here. <laughs> All my homies love Tchaikovsky. Spotify recommended something similar to what I like to listen to, and I will add it to a discovery list. Found a mysterious spooky character in the game at 3 a.m. Posted a video on this title of our YouTube and collected me using sweet dollars. <laughs> Penis, green dollars, euros, currency. <laughs> what the fuck, Coy? <laughs> oh boy. Mostly untextured version of the Lake Powell track. That looks so weird. Removed track. Present at this is a list of internal track names that reveals that there was originally more test tracks. Ship Graveyard, Amazon, Greek Isles, Test Brett, Test Sam, Albert, Lynn, Bob, John, Doug. <laughs> Tag yourself. I'm Test Ald uh, Adalbert. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. The next is the is the Nintendo 64 version, which I did borrow as a child. I think I've pl actually now that I think about it, I I have played every version of Hydro Thunder. I played the uh, Sega Dreamcast version when I was a real real little kid at my cousin's house. That was my first taste of Hydro Thunder, and then later in like middle school or so, um, I borrowed the N64 version from my cousin. And then even further later, I bought the PlayStation 1 version. I also played the arcade version at uh, Walmart back in like circa 2008, maybe? Because they, they had a cabinet of it there, and I was so excited. It was so fucking cool. Um, and then later, I bought Midway Arcade Treasures 3 about a year or two ago, which has the original arcade version in it. So anytime I want, I can just play Hydro Thunder, and I'm so happy that I can do that anytime I want. It's so nice. Anyway. <clears throat> the N64 version of Hydro Thunder is the only home console port of the arcade original to have four-player support with the use of an extension pack, which I'm not sure why it requires an extension pack, since there's four controller ports on the N64. Penny, why does this world sound so weird in the plural? Uh, oh, Penny... Oh, uh, Koi, that's not how you spell pennies. <laughs> you spell penis, <laughs> a.k.a. wiener, a.k.a. schlong. Pennies has an E after the I, like this. Penny plural is pennies, but you spelled it as penis, which understandable mistake. Cause like, if you if you, if you pronounce the I as an E sound, schlong, like this schlong, no, uh, like wiener, penis as in wiener, the male phallus, male genitalia. Honestly, it's hilarious. 
Also, put an E at the end of schlong. It's schlong. Schlong, which is a very funny word for penis. Okay. <clears throat> Names, okay. A bunch of text that wasn't used. Oh, that's it? Really? Present at are some controller related strings. Some of the strings mentioned the N64 transfer pack and a Game Boy cartridge, indicating that there may have been a Game Boy version of Hydro Thunder may have been planned at some point. The final game doesn't use the transfer pack at all. Penis is winner. No, 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 no. Not winner. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, okay. Wanted to make sure I spelled wiener correctly because I don't normally have to spell it. The Dreamcast version of Hydra Thunder, the home, a home. This was apparently a a, 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 a launch title for uh, the Sega Dreamcast, which is crazy to me. It even has a prototype, and we love prototypes in this house. There are four known prototypes of the Dreamcast version of Hydro Thunder, and only one of them has its own page. Damn it. There we go. That's a little better. I'm learning the names of genitals at 118. You live for moments like this. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Also, damn, 118. It's only... It's only about... Uh, 19, uh, 19 hours and 20 minutes here. Assuming you use the 24-hour clock. If you don't use the 24-hour clock, it's 7.20 here. A prototype from June 16th of 1999 was dumped by Laurent and features more uncompiled source code that is not the final build. Oh, it's a bunch of fucking text. God damn it. Oh, boy. Oh, sweet Morden. I use only 24-hour clock. Don't if Hey, come on. There's nothing wrong with a 12-hour clock. There's only two two-digit numbers. <laughs> It's much simpler. Granted, my work clock, the monitors there use a 24-hour clock, so I've had to learn how to um, how to read a 24-hour clock. So it is, uh, yeah, it, it is 1921 here, not the year. Just in case you're trying to make a joke, either. Oh, wait, no, wait, never mind. Uncompiled source code. Ooh, what's this? This needs some investigation. The, the track ID 0x0e is an unused practice track simply named practice. No, because you have to ask, hey, you mean 6 a.m. or 6 p.m.? I hate it. I mean, not really. Because, um... The only time you need to ask about the specific AM or PM is if um, is if you're scheduling something in advance, 
And more often than not, most people don't hang out at 6 a.m. Most people prefer to hang out at 6 p.m. But some people do include the 6 p.m. And here's the thing, Koi. If you count the letters and equate them to the numbers of the 24-hour clock, it, it, it pretty much equates out, like... Hmm. Oh, what is it? Like, um... 1900 hours is 7 o'clock p.m. 700 p.m. Never mind. <laughs> In the later hours, 1900 is technically still, uh... Still, is, is still less characters, so... It's not, that's, it's not always shorthand. Or if you want to shorten it to just 7, it would be less, like 7 p.m. That's just three characters. Whereas if you're doing it in 24-hour time, it's 1900. Or rather, like that. That's more to type. Rather than as as opposed to 7 p.m. for shorthand. So you know, depending on how you look at it. Okay, uh, unused practice track track simply named practice mode in first read dot bin. Um, it also has its own loading screen, which calls the track trainer. The track consists of many obstacles that allow you to practice the various game mechanics. Unlike other tracks, this one has no time limit or AI opponents. Despite the track's polished appearance, there doesn't appear to be any way of accessing it normally. Uh, interestingly, the track of the, the, uh, the back of the game's case lists the game as having 14 vividly rendered tracks. While there are 14 tracks in the game, only 13 of them are normally accessible, with the 14th one being the aforementioned practice track. That's actually super fucking cool. I would have loved to see, to see the practice track. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to pause that. So we can enjoy the video. Our boat. Damn the torpedoes. Damn the torpedoes. Hell yeah. Oh wow. Trainer. That's super cool. Three, oh. Two, oh, I love the interior of this. The interior of this is so fucking cool. I mean, I kind of get why they didn't uh, include this as technically a track, because it's not a track, per se. Oh, wait. It is a track. It's not just a room. Hmm. Wave room. Oh, that's so cool, actually. I love that. I'm just admiring the interior of this place. I would love to just go swimming in here. <laughs> Just a giant enclosed area, jump off of those top girder things up there. I don't understand what you were talking about. Come on, don't be a smart ass. You know what I meant. Nine, 1900 hours, not 1900. <laughs> hours ago. <laughs> That's a good bit, though. That's a good bit. Oh, that's what the ramps look like underneath. That's cool. <laughs> ran into it. How long is this video? Oh, that's not that long. Alright, cool. Wow. Oh, 
The tex the texture on this boat in particular looks different than uh, than in the arcade version, but I kind of like it. I, li I like the way it looks a little better. Oh, it teaches you how to jump! Hell yeah! I was wondering why there was a mechanic that they never taught you how to use. Uh oh, did you fuck it up? No, you just grabbed that somehow. Slalom room? Whoa! Oh, it is the slalom room. That looks really weird. Wow, this is so fucking cool looking. Is that the ramp room or the jump? Oh, those are jumps again, okay. Yeah. Oh, barely made it. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Alright. I need to stop trying to do that. <laughs> I like that. Whoa! What the fuck? Yo, that's so cool! I've always loved grid rooms like this. One, that's a good bit. Two, that's not true and you know it. This looks so fucking rad. There's like grid lines everywhere. Do you not like put yourself in video games mentally? Because I do. I, I, I like to imagine myself being inside that fucking boat and driving around that giant gridded room. Fucking sweet. I, mean, I would have loved to have fucking played through this. To explore in here for hours. It's a giant room made of um, early CGI grid lines. <clears throat> early CGI grid lines. The full context for this level is that it is a training area that like takes place inside. You have no time limit. You're just made to like learn the mechanics of the game. And the fact that they went to this uh, this extra level of detail to include a giant room like this is such a nice little treat, in my opinion. And it would have been nice to actually played it. Um, it's tub, but it's small. Very <laughs> small. I mean, hey, this is an old game. It's not going to be the biggest, and it's not intended to be. It's meant to be a training area. Can't jump it.
That's cool as fuck, dude. I don't care what you say, Koi. That was cool as hell. Bottle of Mario Bros. with... I don't know what that says. Also, that looks like Russian. So I'm going to assume you're Russian, Koi. Bootleg? Bootleg, got it. I am not Russian. You're right, there are other, um... There are other alphabets that use similar wording, so maybe, like, Ukrainian or somewhere around that area. I'm not assuming Ukrainian, I'm just guessing Ukrainian. If you are Ukrainian... Uh... I hope things get better. in the back of the game. Oh, okay, that's right. Developer messages. More stuff that I don't want to read through. Okay. Oh, yeah, real prototype. Never mind. Now it's for Off-Road Thunder! Which I didn't even know existed until I got, um, Midway Arcade Treasures 3. An average off-road racing game, which has a surprising amount of unused content. In my country, don't use Cyrillic. I just had many Russian cartoon in my childhood, and it's cartoon. Okay. Ugh, fair play. And where is it? Average is about right, but average doesn't necessarily mean not fun. It's super fun. Developer mention found at this on offer 3.exe is a message. This message can also be found in Hydra Thunder, which was developed by the same team. Present at the beginning of the credits, a bunch of stuff. Wow. That's a lot of words. Whoop. Hello, what's this? Ooh, I like this one. That's a cool, like, devil car. Oh, it is a devil car. <laughs> Fucking 13. That's funny as hell. Javerks? Uh, what the fuck? Oh, it's called Bad Omen. Oh, that's funny. I like that. <laughs> it's sponsored by Atkins. That's hilarious. Um, Koi, if you're unaware, Atkins is a dietary plan that people in the U.S. go on. Skull, eight-year-old me, like it for... I mean, hey, skulls are for any age. Even ones with thin, pointy teeth. And claws. This is... Hilariously 90s, and I love it. A couple of... Oops. Here we go. A couple of early textures for the Bad Omen vehicle. Originally, it was going to be a van, but was changed into a semi-truck, which... I kind of wish it stayed a van. That looks cooler. Oh, that also looks rad as hell. Firebug? Oh, that's so cool! There's like a little bug on the back of it, that's cute. A couple of unused textures for a vehicle known as Firebug, which doesn't appear in the final game. It may have been an early version of the, the Stinger vehicle. That's weird. And a very early texture for the Snake Eyes vehicle. Oh, okay. A very early texture for an unknown vehicle, One Pro Arena. Oh, cool. That's good when gave him small bug. I mean, it's not that simple. It's I'm more so enjoying the aesthetics of it, the visual style. I'm taking in the visuals and I'm appreciating it for what it is and what it 
and how it may have been enjoyed in, in its time period, because this game came out in the 90s. Small icons for each of the vehicles in the game, including some icons for vehicles that don't appear or are based on earlier designs. Yeah, there's that one for Bad Omen. And I guess this was, whoops, didn't mean to go backward, I didn't mean to click on that. I thought it was one long image, but apparently not. I've always liked that one, that one's neat looking. It reminds me of an RC car. All of these remind me of RC cars, but this one especially. You know what Wise came What? You know what Wise came up in the 90s? I don't know what you mean. Oh, do you know what else came up in the 90s? Excuse me. What else came up in the 90s, Koi? You? If so, hey, hello, how do you do, fellow 90s kid? <sighs> hmm, I too am a 90s child. Even if I was born halfway through it. Uh, give or take. I was born four years into the 90s. And didn't really become fully cognizant uh, until the early 2000s. I meant Gar... Gurbengali Birdie Mohamedo. I'm going to assume that is an obscure historical figure and leave it at that. <laughs> Boo. Who are you booing? <laughs> Who are you booing, man? Come on. It's the usual shtick, Koi. It's the usual joke. Medium. Boo to you. Well, yeah. I mean, you 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 mention an obscure uh, historical figure that I've never heard of. That's close to how you that, that's close to how you spell usual. And that is what I would imagine shtick would be spelled like, so that's close enough. Usual shtick. Yeah, it is. You mention a random uh, obscure historical figure, and then you explain who they are. These are the early versions for the difficulty settings. I don't know what the fuck 8-bowl is. Medium, airtime, hard, cutting corners, diesel dome, double barrel, over and under, split spike. Early, early track icons, including ones for tracks that don't appear in the final game. Oh, okay. Like 8-Bowl, Cutting Corners, Diesel Dome, and Split Second. I met Turkman Doctor and Politician, Deputy Prime Minister in 2001 to 2007, Chairman of the Dem uh, Democratic Party of Turkmenistan in 2006 to 2013, from December 21st, 2006 to March 19th of 2022, President for Life of Turkmenistan, the more you know. Cool. Appreciate the little bit of history. That would be an appropriate time for the uh, history moment uh, uh, sound alert that I have. I, I've got that just for you and just in case I happen to remember any offhand history knowledge from college. Oh, that's creepy. What the fuck? Oh, that's also creepy. Weird low poly people. That's really weird. Early checkpoint and winner graphics. That's really creepy. Coming soon and locked. A coming soon and locked graphic. Yep. Placeholder menu icons. Hot potato, mash mode, and slam cam. The fuck is that? Slam cam. An early nitro gauge. 
I guess those are tra track mini maps. Five maps along with a placeholder. The first one seems to be an early version of the Tunnel Vision track, and the rest of them don't match up with any of the tracks in the final game. Uh, the final game doesn't display a map of the track, which sucks, because it should. What the fuck? <laughs> what up, guys? Don't mind me. Magal, this caveman again. Show the caveman again. Why? They look so dumb. Like, look how creepy that guy. That guy. That guy looks very unwell. That guy looks like he's. He doesn't even know how he got here. And she looks like she messed up her lipstick halfway through. Wiener. Yeah, it's the wiener. It's not wiener, but it's close. Wiener. You are the wiener. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing weird going on here. Just a guy choking a rubber chicken. Present among the textures for the Carney O Chaos track is an image of somebody holding a rubber chicken, which is absolutely hilarious. So you guys, you guys want any? I got all day. A chicken very. F it's not the it's not the chicken itself. It's the fact that someone used it as a texture in a video game. <laughs> oh, we got some fog effects, sky texture. Excuse me. Early player icons. That one's dead. What the is? It's a mag. What the hell? Sergeant McGruff says most winners don't. Oh, that was from the arcade. Okay, now I remember. Uh, let's see. An unused winners don't do drugs spoof. It's likely a developer joke since the final game doesn't display a winners don't do drugs screen. So, Koi, this is a reference to in the 90s, there was a big war, quote unquote, war on drugs. The evils of marijuana, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and in the arcades, right after you would put your quarter in, this a little a little image would pop up and it would say winners don't do drugs and it's really funny in hindsight but this one just says most winners don't do drugs look at the funny distracting monkey what the fuck that's very silly a funny distracting monkey most wieners don't do drugs. You are correct, Koi. Most wieners do not do drugs. Alfred Racing tip number two. Use steering wheel to steer. <laughs> oh, sarcasm. It's just a fucking steering wheel in a regular ass car. An unused tip about steering. Off-road to 1999. I was five years old in 1999. I was in kindergarten. Hilarious. Hidden geometry. Oh, that's cool. There's a pyramid below one of the tracks. Under the beach area of the airtime track is some out of bounds level geometry, aka a fucking pyramid. I did not expect to find this much stuff in here. That's This is awesome. A test track known as AI Test exists. Unfortunately, it crashes when accessed. Okay, and so we are looking to look at the arcade versions of Arctic Thunder and the PlayStation 2 and Xbox versions of Arctic Thunder. Off Road 1989, hardcore. Close, it's 1999, but sure. <laughs> Whoops. If you have a suitable image, please click this message and please click this message. Oh, okay. Rambo Toto Rototo is in Vietnam. Toto. What are you talking about? 1969. Nice. Well, there's nothing here for the arcade port. Let's try the PS2 port. Someone made a page but didn't do anything with it. There it is. Hell yeah. Debugging features. Present on the Xbox port is env.txt, which contains some debugging features. Okay. 
show FPS enabled. Well, that's kind of disappointing. There's hardly anything here. Oh well. On to the next thing. Which is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, which I played a couple of weeks ago, I think. It's at the very least it was back it was in late July, I believe. Nah, I feel like it was in early August. Somewhere around there. Excuse me. It was during the extreme sports section. Rather stubbly. Opportunity the sequel to the original Hot Pursuit. Thank you. Which also serves as this debug like add underscore trait underscore inbreed. I don't know if that's debug or not. Uh, Koi? Crawls in and dies. Hi, Aiden. Welcome. How was work? <laughs> I hope you're. I hope you're resting. I hope you're getting some rest. We're looking at um, TCRF pages. We looked through uh, Ar uh, Hydro Thunder, Off Road Thunder, and Arctic Thunder just a little bit ago. There was surprisingly very little in Hydro and Arctic Thunder. There was quite a bit in Off Road Thunder. It's so hot. Oh no. Stay hydrated, Aiden. Stay hydrated. Hot Pursuit 2, which also serves as the series foray into the sixth generation of consoles. The PlayStation 2 version is significantly different from the other versions of the game. Hell yeah, it is. Yep. That's what I thought. Prototype. I know I'm desert plan, but come on. Oh, I, f I know. Oh, I know I'm a desert plant, but come on. <laughs> Gotta save up them fluids. I know it's hard to sometimes, though. <laughs> sometimes I see a text box and I just can't help myself. <laughs> I love this page sucks. If you could make it suck less, that would be awesome. <laughs> it's so funny. Gonna move my mic a little bit. There we go. <laughs> What is this from? Oh, hold on. Queen of oh, it's Queena's theme from Final Fantasy IX. Hell yeah. One of these days I need to do a Final Fantasy marathon of like uh, 7 through 9 and like 3 through 6. That'd be cool. I really don't like 1 and 2 that much, honestly. I have them. I could play them with, like, maybe a walkthrough, but even with a walkthrough, I get lost. Oh, hey. Prototypes documented on Hidden, Hidden Palace. Compiled a month before the final build. Oh, the only difference is the copyright text. And pushing and loading slightly moved to the left. Yeah, it was moved to the left. That's weird. The debug menu also existed in different PlayStation 2 demos. Oh, that's weird. Come on now. Oh, wow. Early, uh, early countdown timer. That is... That didn't used to be there. Need for speed wiener that dude. <laughs> oh, Koi. Aiden, uh, the wiener doesn't do drugs. So earlier, Aiden, Koi was talking about buying things. And instead of saying pennies, he spelled penis, which is hilarious for starters. And to get him to understand that that spells penis, I'm like, it's male genitalia, wiener. <laughs> and I told him how to spell wiener, 
And later on, we found a uh, an unused Winners Don't Do Drugs parody in the Off-Road Theory page. And uh, the thing, the page said most wieners don't do drugs, and then Koi took that and ran with it, and now it's most wieners don't do drugs. And he's not wrong, most wieners do not do drugs. Can't say he's wrong on that. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so the debug mode is accessible in the demo. It's very interesting to see, honestly. Okay. That's also really cool to see the early speedometer like that. It's very strange looking. Several demo builds from the official UK PlayStation 2 magazine demo disc. And the official US PlayStation magazine demo disc 61 exists. Demo builds contain debug camera to activate it, connect the second controller and press select. They also have uh, some debug, they, have, uh, they also have same debug menu as aforementioned July 3rd prototype. What the hell? Official PS2 magazine demo disc. Hot Pursuit 2 beta demo. Oh, that looks weird. The Diablo and the 360 Spider and one playable track. National Forest. National Forest is the best track. 2002. I was... I was eight years old. Mm-mm. Because of Wiener, I feel like when my sister taught me two curse words when I was pregnant for four years, probably the earliest memory. Okay, you're making up more shit. All right, got it. There's a different looking ta taco meter in the... Uh, tachometer in the demo and it has no numbers on it. Here's on three, two, one. Yeah. The tachometer looks like it's much better. Yeah. Fook never again using Google Translate. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, Google Translate's not always the best. It is apparently very reliable for translating English to German. I managed to pass all four semesters of my German class. I wasn't man. I wasn't. I mean, when I was four years old. Oh boy, you can do it, Koi. You can do it. Okay, so basically, um, were you or were you not pregnant? <laughs> yes or no? You can do it. There we go. <laughs> That's a very appropriate emote, Koi. Demo builds contain debug camera. They also have... Oh, okay, I already looked at this. And I imagine it's the same one here. Rock and Track presents the need for speed. Wow. Oh, I love Need for Speed 2015. Edge. Hot Pursuit 2. Okay, so this is the Windows and GameCube and Xbox version of the game. I wasn't pregnant. Okay. Good to know. Maybe translate that single word itself to make sure it's the to make sure you're you're getting the right word. It usually does better with single words. But yes, this is the I used to have the GameCube version and I honestly found it much more boring than the PlayStation 2 version. 
This game's online features are no longer supported. While this game's online features were once accessible, they are as of 20... Wow, 2014. I didn't realize they were, they were, they were up for that long. No longer officially supported, and online exclusive features may be documented as now unseen content. Cool. This page is rather stubbly. Are you a bad enough dude to rescue this article? Oh, I love that. That's very sweet and cute. Alright, it's the sequel to the original Hot Pursuit, which also serves as the series foray into the sixth generation of consoles. The Windows, GameCube, and Xbox versions are significantly different. Me with the fan on. <laughs> oh, I feel you. I feel that, Aiden. I have not been that hot in years, and it's... Um, so for my senior, so for my, in high school, I don't know if, um, I don't know if they did this in your state, Aiden, um, and Koi, I don't know if they, I don't know if they do this where you live, but in high school, near the senior, near your senior year of high school slash secondary school, um, you have to do what's known as a senior project or a graduation project where you have to write a very long paper with multiple sources that come from actual books on a subject that you may or may not want to pursue as a career. And I chose a screen printer, like someone who makes t-shirts. And I managed to find a guy locally who could, uh, who makes t-shirts for a living. And he, he, he goes into this, it looks like a giant garage slash like hall area, but there's no doors. Uh, I had to make a photo album for my senior project. You're lucky, because uh, we had to we had to write a whole paper. We had to do um, apprenticeships for people who are in the field that we chose, and we had to give a presentation and we had to have a product. We had to have a product. Um, from the field that we chose. Uh, mine was a t-shirt that I helped make. Um, I would have rather have taken pictures and just made a presentation with that. I didn't need to do a whole ass 15 page paper. That's absurd. Anyway. Um, they forced us to like put right every single, all of our sources, all of our cited sources on individual note cards. And it's, so fucking annoying. I hated it. Inclu and I, as well as the work cited page at the very end. Oh my God, I had something like that only you had to use data only from the school library. So also some libraries next to the school. Terrible. That's actually how mine was, Koi. We had to use sources from the school library. But we, we were allowed like three online sources and they couldn't be Wikipedia sources, obviously. Um... Well, we had to use at least two or three books from our library uh, for for information on our paper, and it fucking sucked. <sighs> yeah, it was awful. Um, but anyway, back to the context. So the pre the screen printing guy that I worked that I apprenticed under. He had a giant screen printer that had like five arms to it, and each one served to like press the ink through the mesh and onto the shirt. Um, and I don't know why, but it got at least over 120 degrees in there. It got so hot that when we stepped outside to cool off, 90 degree weather felt like 70 degrees. It was unreal. Would you rather show the entire senior class your body? baby slash toddler pictures why did you huh oh you're oh, okay the ones of you I mean I honestly yes I would have rather I would rather have done that than write a paper that paper made me cry I, I, it was so mentally torturous I hate it so much I got a little more used to writing papers throughout college but like Damn, that one. That senior project paper did a number on my psyche. <laughs> and the fucking high school teachers were like, you're gonna, you're gonna have to write a ton of papers just like this in high school. 
If it wasn't fact for the fact that I chose a dingy, a dingy topic, someone would have taken my materials because the school always preferred to invest in new balls and ropes rather than printers. Oh, that sucks. But yeah, uh, the, my high school teachers were like, you have to write so many papers just like this in high school. And we were under the assumption that we would have to like write our citations on note cards every time. But no, we never did. They were just like, yeah, just, just give me a, just give me a, um, a bibliography at the end with, with all your cited sources in this specific format. And we're like, got it. No problem. Easiest part of the paper was that work cited page. So fucking easy. Or in, in college, they were. In, in high school, it was a fucking nightmare. Okay. Unused audio. Yeah. Turn that down just a little bit. Highly recommend Demon Turf. I will be playing it on stream at some point whenever we get to my Nintendo Switch collection. Eventually. Debug stuff, unused audio, nothing to show for it. Unused car logo. Unused select lo car select logo. Ford SVT Mustang Cobra R. I love the Cobra R. Alternative version of the radar and a mock up of how it could have looked like. Oh, okay. That's cool looking though. What the fuck? <laughs> Imagine that as the background. Just like intense lines. That's early 2000s as fuck. A few textures supposedly used for menus and loading screens that don't seem to match the style of those used in the final game. Unused vehicles and... S By the way, it turned out that if you had an average above four in the subject you were supposed to write about, you could move on without writing. You could just drop the average. But no one told me about it. Oh, that sucks. We have letter grades in the U.S. I'm assuming that four is an A or a B, maybe? I don't know. I would have loved to see this school bus in the game and just fucking run into it. <gasps> Ooh, unused tracks. A folder called Testbed is only found in the GameCube and Xbox versions. Trying to play split screen on those tracks mode will reveal hidden reflective surfaces with the words no cookie spelt backwards. What? I gotta see this. Unused track files. In order to play them, some of the Parkland's tracks have been replaced. Those developers' tracks can be found in the testbed folder. Not much going on in it, though. That's weird. You have to respawn on the other side. Need for speed, cargo burr, bald man shoots, car explosion, ah. Only oh, survived. End of speed for sp end end of need for speed 76. Next part in next year. Are you sure you're not talking about the fast and furious? Because that sounds like what you're talking about. <laughs> Hammering! 
That's not what that means. To hemorrhage means to bleed out. Also, I would love to play fast and furries. Just driving cars, but the drivers are all furries. That'd be fucking great. They're all they're all in, in fursuits. It's okay, man. No problem. I imagine you're still learning the language, and that's perfectly fine. To hemorrhage in, in, in English means to bleed out. What the fuck? I meant stroke. As in, like, a mental stroke where you, like, go men go brain dead? If so, it does- so it does appear to be- the, the game itself in this demo version does appear to be stroking out a little bit. Okay, this is the other unused track. Which looks about the same. Oh wait, no, there's some there's some some turns in it. Surprising. Yeah, there's a few sharp turns in it. Some like one one pedestrian car. One thing I do find one thing I do find very funny about this uh, about Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 is the fact uh, that the sports cars that you drive look fucking gigantic compared to the regular pedestrian cars that you have to dodge around. It's always so funny to me that that's the case. No, I mean stroke cerebrovascular event, formerly also apoplexy. Like, to have a stroke? Hold on. Let me see if I can... Maybe figure out what you're trying to say? We'll see. Also, this is, this is gonna be a bit of a shorter stream. Just because today was a... It was a half day for subbing, but it was my first day back as a substitute. And I had uh, two classes of freshmen back to back. And they were not awful, but just just real chaotic, and I didn't read the instructions as well as I should have, which led to some confusion on everyone's part. So, but according to the teacher next door, who had to who had to come in and yell at the students three different times, uh, it apparently went pretty well. <laughs> so I'll take her word for it. Oh, right, I was gonna look up stroke. You read creepypasta? Not really. I, 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 read, I read some of the famous ones when I was younger, like Ben Drowned. 13 to 15 are a chaotic breed. Oh, absolutely they are. Okay, so a stroke, Koi, is a damage to the brain from interruption of its blood supply. A stroke is a medical emergency. But yes, I agree, Aiden. 13 to 15 are cha a chaotic breed, but they are at least willing to listen if someone is willing to listen to them, from what I have seen. Some of them really like to add their own comments. Like, I have never seen so many cases of me saying sit down, followed, immediate, followed immediately, 
Sorry, the screen music made me think you were reading Creepypasta at the moment. Oh, that's true. It did kind of sound like it, yeah. That makes me want to see what it was. Oh, it was a song from Earthbound, which is a wonderful RPG, which I will play at some... Excuse me, at some point. But yeah, I... I several, several times today, from at least two or three different students, I would tell one student to sit down, and then that same student would pipe up with, Yeah, X, X or Y, sit down! And I want, and I'm looking at the student that just piped up like, shut your goddamn mouth, you arrogant bitch. You do not help. And I make sure to let them know. I'm like, you do, I'm like, I'm like, your comments aren't necessary. One kid, <laughs> one kid kept doing it, but it was the very end of class. And he's like, yeah, and, I'm, and I just turned at him. I'm like, shut. <laughs> I didn't I didn't say it in like a angry way in more of like a tired way I'm just like shut up <laughs> everyone else laughed along with it so thankfully it should be fine hmm this is what I was looking for okay so uh, in the GameCube and Xbox versions, all INI files are loaded from a file called INS. INS is dot I hate minors, but adults too. It's okay, Koi. You can just say that you hate strangers. Strangers are dangerous. <laughs> Instead of reading INI files from each folder in the Windows version. Also, the GameCube version has a different loading bar and, and lacks online multiplayer. Because the GameCube has no internet capabilities. Gameplay hints before races are absent in the GameCube version. And also, some versions of the GameCube version just have different tracks altogether. The PS2 has like you very unique looking tracks. It's very strange. They made a they made a version specifically for the PlayStation 2, which is so weird to me. Is this music loud to you? Let me know if it is. It seems louder than the other music. I did not turn up the volume. Some music is just mixed louder. Ooh, it is Sleep Makes Waves, though. I love Sleep Makes Waves. Okay, so... That is it for the Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 page. Disappointing, but... a little educational nonetheless. Up next... We have, oh, I wish Mano was here to see this. The TCRF page of Anime Hell Itself. Orphan Scion of Sorcery. Also known as Sorceress Stabber Orphan. What? Have you ever killed a fly and felt remorse? No. Not really. I felt bad for accidentally squishing a frog under my car tires. Oftentimes they, uh, not, well, not, not uh, either a frog or a toad, one of the two, but more often than not, whenever it's rainy and I'm pulling into, into my garage, um, some toads will be like right at the door trying to get in and I have to put, push my car I have to put my car in the garage and they, they sometimes accidentally get in the way and get squished and I feel bad I do love that sorceress stabber orf damn okay so it was developed by Shade and published by Kodokawa in, in Japan and Activision in the US It's got a debug menu. Okay. A large debug menu can be enabled with the below code. Apply the code and press select while in game or at the main menu to access it. USA. Damn it, it's for game shark code. I was hoping. I was hoping that um, it would be like a button combo and not a game shark code. If I could unlock the debug mode for Orphan Sign of Sorcery, though, as easily as, as I can for Jack 1 and 2. Oh, 
It would have been perfect. Okay. Damn, that's a lot of stuff. BGM check. I don't know what SE means. <laughs> no, not really, psychopath. No, Koi, that's not how that works. I'm sure you're just joking around, but mental health is important. And if people don't take it seriously, then people don't, you know, seriously look into getting help for it. Movie check. Movie number one. Camera distance. Oh, that would have been nice to manually change. Effect check. Monster check. That's funny. Is this a... Selecting anything here will send you to a test map with the monster number you choose? Oh, that's weird. Pages missing. Developer references. Is that it? Oh, that's so disappointing. That's all there is. It's just a debug mode and some test and a test map. Well, ain't that a bitch? Only an hour and 22 minutes in. We may have to go to some. Yeah, it's a very short. It's surprisingly short. Yeah, boo indeed. Okay, that uh, too much. <laughs> small, small indeed, uh, Aiden. All right, Koi, the bit's going too far. Stop, please. Okay, so the PlayStation 2 version of Rayman 3 was not on TCRF, but the GameCube version was. And I'm pretty sure it's as close as the PlayStation 2 version, so we'll go with Rayman 3 on the GameCube. Which I do not have. But, like I said, it's close. It's close enough. Developed by Ubisoft Montpellier, which I guess is France. We could bite the page. <laughs> we could bite the page. Bite the power that be. <laughs> yeah, instead of instead of fight the power, it's bite the power. Hilarious. Release the dogs of war. Let them feed on blood. End dot fan. Mock. Oh, Koi. I appreciate you putting- I, I appreciate you bringing it in to the, uh, faux outrage. Rayman 3 is the third installment of the Rayman series. In this game, Rayman helps take down an army of hooded lums, known as hoodlums, which is hilarious, uh, who are attacking his world, so he decides to step and fight- I think he means step up and fight back. Helped by his friends Murphy, a green fly voiced by Billy West, and Glowbox, the blue frog-like character, which, uh, Aiden, I don't remember, I'm not sure how much of, uh, Rayman 3 that you watched, but Glowbox is, like, all <laughs> the squint. They're watching you, Koi. But watch yourself. Who just so happened to have swallowed, uh, the main bad guy. Prototype. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the mic. Boom. Oh. A playable demo of Rayman 3 was released in on interactive multi-game demo disc. Isn't that the frog that's allergic to something? Yeah, it's the frog slash toad looking guy who's allergic to plum juice. His name's Glowbox. He's real fucking goofy. He's like blue. Weird a weird shade of blue. Rayman Revolution is the Rayman 2 Revolution is the is the PS is the PS2 remaster of Rayman 2, which I really want to get so I can play Rayman 2 on PS2, even though I have it on N64. Also, they made a, a three. He's blue da ba da ba die. Yep. <laughs> he lives in a blue world. Rayman 3D I do have, and it is on the 3DS, which I can't play. Blue box, blue box, yeah, for real. It's a blue. It's a he's a blue. He's a box who is blue. I love how catchy the pause menu music is for Donkey Kong 64. 
Unused text, snorty. According to this unused line in Game Data Bin, a character named Snorty was supposed to appear in the game. Pff, ain't even possible to have a little nap around here. I have no clue the fuck Snorty is. But, uh, pas possible de piquer une petite ceste par-ci, par ici. I did my best French. No, I, I never learned it, but I know a little bit of like the pronunciations and that's it debug features Ooh, there are two debugging features mistakenly left in the game uh, both accessible by pressing R plus start the first is in the first part of the fairy council holding R plus start will cause Murphy to stop flying until the player lets go that's funny the second is in the fourth part of the desert of the Canarin Pressing R plus start will cause the text Sale 01, room 01, to appear in the bottom left of the screen. If the player then holds the R button and presses up or down on the D-pad, the number can be advanced up to 5. Holding R and releasing left on the D-pad will then cause Rayman to be teleported to a specific location depending on what number is displayed. Oh, that's cool! Oh god, I remember a song on the radio, I Am Blue, with voiceover translation that's very interesting that it went that uh i'm blue and daba diaba die uh was on the radio like all around the world i remember it being like a Eurobeat track in in europe obviously and then it came to the u.s in the 90s i got so sick of that song i'm blue i like the way he sings though oh yeah okay so uh, about half, about like a third of the way, maybe a fourth of the way into the game, uh, the, after the first boss, which which takes place in this arena, you see a wanted poster for like a big furry creature, but he never shows up in the game. Um, you can see, you can find him in the game, in the Tower of Leptis, uh, which I tried to unlock, but I couldn't figure out how. So in the fourth part of the world. The Tower of Leptis, a secret room containing three scrapped creatures, will open if the player has gained enough points, which I never did. One of these creatures, the Zoar, or Zoar, has various animations that still exist on the game but are not shown off. And I have been wanting to look at this for a while. I love this thing. So I recently found a way. I ran through unused Zoar animations. So I recently found a way to replace the animations of Rayman 3. So here, uh, here is it. Classic. Uh, Zoar unused animations. For history, this character was a scrapped boss in the game because he was too difficult to program. It's 2.14. I need to wake up in 6. I need to slip. Go to sleep, uh, Koi. All right, have a good night. Bye bye. Appreciate you coming by. Eat corn. Will do, Koi. Will do. Koi corn. Corn Koi. All right. <laughs> and don't. <laughs> You're fine, Koi. Just don't overuse the asking be to be not banned. <laughs> bye bye. Oh boy. Yeah, there he is. This one named uh, Zhao uh, Cutscene Ka, so it's probably the entrance cutscene. No, this is behavior because I haven't done anything to the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So he would have like, he would have seen the first two st two two things of his feet. This one's named Zhao Ray Death, probably the one when Rayman defeats Zhoar. Again, note that the camera, it zooms out. This would have been cool to see, though. Yeah, it does zoom out. That's a very interesting animation. Cool looking. Ba 
Bye bye, Koi. Uh, oh, damn it. There we go. In the fourth part. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 2D Nightmare. 2D Nightmare is a mini game that is exclusive to the GameCube version of Rayman 3. Uh, it was intended to be unlocked by connecting the GameCube to a copy of Rayman 3 GBA, with every level complete. Unfor unfortunately, due to a bug in the GBA version that causes the game to not save the completion state of the final level, 2D Nightmare is, unaccess is inaccessible without using cheats, similar to the unlockable 2D Madness. And, uh, 2D Nightmare is a side-scroller minigame set in the world of, of the first Rayman game. 2D Nightmare, however, takes place in a picture sky, while 2D Madness takes, takes place in the Dream Forest. Correct. It can be accessed by enabling these action replay codes. And 2D Madness in Rayman 3 is... I've never been able to beat it a single time. Oh, it's the pencil! It's the pencil level. That's when shit gets real hard in Rayman 1. Yep. Specific platforming. Real hard. Smooth frame rate, though. That's very interesting. Hell yeah. What the fuck? What's happening? Oops. What happened? Oh, the video's gone. Damn it. Oh well. We pretty much saw what we needed to see. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Test map. Is it really is this really not possible to be loaded? Uh, I tried replacing just the sectors with another level and the level that was working crashed, so it's likely the files are gone. Another person here, using Raymap, I was able to see that the test map seems to be an early version of the minigame Wheelies, albeit with some quirks. If someone could verify this with more than just Raymap and or get some screenshots of the geometry and collision and update the section in general. Present only in the GameCube version is the test map folder named Test. However, a current way to access it is unknown. It's likely that it was meant to, uh, to be a test map for mad tracks because it's it's textures are there and the test map is only present in the GameCube version which is very fascinating because uh, mad tracks was a GameCube exclusive the way that you needed uh, the Game Boy Advance link cable and what you would do is the person on the Game Boy would draw the tr would draw out the tracks using the Game Boy Advance and the person on the GameCube would have to uh, be miniature Rayman in the shoe riding down the track and you would have to complete the track as you went very interesting Ooh, early levels the third and fourth part of the of the world the bog of murk which is that uh, uh, detour with the witch and the hunter guy appear to have originally been the same map but ended up being separated however both parts have a prototype copy of the other where only a few gems are present some elements like screws are non-functional and are and there aren't any enemies or cages uh, these errors can be accessed in game with hacks or glitches and we're gonna look at them we're gonna unmute it oh that's cool the gamecube version has a loading bar It's a low frame rate, what the hell?
This doesn't appear to be any different. Oh, okay. They're using the helicopter infinitely to be able to uh, get to the other side, which is this unused area. Oh, that's interesting. You can't even see Raymond anymore. You can hear him, though. There he is. I guess the area is somewhere around here. Why is that frame rate so slow? This must be the area itself. But it looks about the same as the final area. I guess it's just been cut. Well, it's like it said, the earlier version was like, um, seamlessly connected. That's so funny. Being able to select the combat fatigues. Oh yeah, there's no... There's no hoodlums. No enemies. Pretty much the same, except it's one large area now. What are you doing, dude? There you go. <laughs> He's been wearing that flight suit for so long, it makes me feel like it's more of a... like a survey outfit. Like, he's, he's venturing across alien worlds. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, we're about halfway through. Oh, what the fuck? I would love to be able to do this. Like, if I had the debug codes and whatnot, this would be so fucking cool. I like the skybox. That's very pretty. Where is he going? He's just going off into infinity. Oh, there he is. Ghost levels for TCRF. Ghost levels. What makes these ghost levels? I guess it's... Um, Areas without um, textures, like, uh, or not textures, but collision. Areas without collision. And so you pass through them. There's a ghost city in um, Grand Theft Auto 3. You can actually take the planes behind, like, the mountains or something. And it's uh, a ghost city of. Um... What the fuck? It's a ghost city of. Uh that was likely used during uh, the opening cutscene of the game. Very interesting. Sorry if I sound tired, I'm just really close to the mic and I don't want to raise my voice. Pew, 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 pew. Pa, 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 party till I die. With my head held high. Fuck them all, fuck them by. I really wish there was a significant different difference that you could tell. Oh well, let's see. Uh, back to the music. Okay. Take a sip. 
sip of my tea. Hibiscus mint tea. It's a very, very delicious tea. It's good both warm and at room temperature and cold. The third and fourth parts. Oh, it's the third and fourth parts of the Bog of Merc. Appeared to have originally been the same map, but ended up being separated. Oh, okay, now I get what they were. Now I get what he was demonstrating. Those were two wholly separate parts of the of what used to be the same map, but they had to be separated. God, I, I, now I get what they mean. Ooh, there's an unused trap lup, trap plum. It was scrapped for unknown reasons. It looks like it was a plum that if the player picks, he'd be trapped by the enemy. Oh, this is this will be good. How long is this? Oh, it's a minute. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> It's fucking eyes on the chest. Ugh. I still say my favorite level in the entirety of Rayman 3 is clearly Forest, the for the first level, and the Fairy Council. Like they're both absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> That's so goofy. So weird. Is this like the final animation for it? Or not the final animation, but did this person manage to get the animation to work? Maybe not. Oh I see. It would have it would have like clamped down on him. That's very interesting. Yeah, they got internal mechanisms for stabbing and slicing or whatever. Slices, dices, makes julian fries. Let's see, is there anything else for the Rayman? For the Rayman, yeah. Rayman 3 H Dizzle. I'm probably not going to play Rayman 3 HD since I've already played through the original game. Rayman 3 HD is the remake of the... It's not a remake, it's a remaster of the third installment of the Freeman series where our titular HD hero can finally rid his HD world of the evil HD scarecrow fairies invading it. Oh, and apparently there's something about updated graphics, but it's not really well advertised. <laughs> That's a good bit. I like that. Maybe in like a year I'll play Rayman 3 HD. Just for the gigglies. Ooh. Grass texture was shown in early footage of the land of the livid dead, but was scrapped for unknown reasons, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna end stream just yet. It's still too early, in my opinion. So, Aiden, did you have a game that you wanted to see early or unused stuff for? If so, I'll search it and see if there's anything for it. I was stretching while talking, sorry. I'm gonna mute the mic so I can close this bag of chips without crowding the microphone while you decide. Psychonauts would be a wonderful idea, Aiden. However, I will get to it, but only after I've played Psychonauts. I want to, I, I want to start a sort of consistent thing or theme, I guess, where I play through a game, and then once I finish it, I look at the TCRF page for it, and I, I want to wait until I play Psychonauts to look at the TCRF page. But we will eventually uh, get. To the Psychonauts TCRF page, and we are gonna play through both Psychonauts 1 and 2 on stream. By God, it's gonna fucking happen. Is there any other game besides Psychonauts that you would like to see the TCRF pages for? Uh, let's see. We can do it. We can, uh, 
search it by platform, you have a whole bunch of weird, obscure... No, nah, not really. <laughs> Dang. Oh, well. Worth a shot. Let's see what else we got on here. TCRF. Oh, Clock Tower. I'm never going to play Clock Tower, but I love the Clock Tower series. They're fun to, to watch and look at, but I, I've never been able to good, uh... I've never been good at it to be able to play through it. Clock Towel. Oh, that's the one. The first entry of the successful series and the only one to never be released outside Japan, along with its 1997 PlayStation port Clock Tower, The First Fear. Uh, luckily, an English fan translation is available. This is like the proto-survival horror game, too. It's very fascinating. kind of notes we got descriptions and rum offsets list of animation offsets are they actually animated no they're not a boo are there any of these that are images nope no pretty pictures Aiden as the green dagger was removed see below all the related text goes unused Oh, okay. The first two lines are stored. Oh, unused text. Okay. Looking for that good. <laughs> Hell yeah. There's the HUD. Illegal face. <laughs> My name's Illegal Face, and I care what you think <laughs> every time I see a word with the with the also with the word face next to it I have to do an uh, an altered version of blurry face and I don't know why <laughs> my name's illegal face and I care what you think <laughs> illegal anime hilarious Elements. There's one unused portrait of a rather distressed Jennifer. Or Jennifer. The background color is fully capable of changing depending on Jennifer's life. Oh, that's cool. Like all others, it can be brought back with pro action replay. Or par. This portrait appears in the PlayStation port if uh, Jennifer drinks from the cupboard in the kitchen and the drink knocks her out. Weird. Two unused cursor sprites. Uh, they are loaded into the VRAM along with the regular cursor and items. The size of the first icon makes it similar to the item selection cursor for the inventory in the PC. Ver Is a PC version? Damn. The other one looks like something uh, an in-game editor would use during development. The player palette was used for these images as we want the player palette oh the player palette was used for these images as the normal cursor palette wasn't suitable that's a cool looking sword though it's oh it's a dagger well poo this green dagger can't be found anywhere in the mansion and it was part of a removed puzzle read below uh can be brought back with pro action replay but does not interact with anything when equipped it's named bronze dagger that does not look like bronze but then again bronze that has been um oxidized turns green much like the statue of liberty so i kind of you know it, it makes sense this unused key sprite is a key sprite oh wow jennifer unused graphics bobby unused scissorman hell yeah man let's get into this baby it's it's Bobby Hill from uh, from King of the Hill. Dad, I'm coming for you, Dad. Shunk, shunk, shunk. Giant hedge clippers. 
<laughs> the only thing Hank is worried about is Bobby breaking his hedge clippers. Bobby, what are you doing with my hedge clippers? <laughs> Bobby tries to, sh to stab him in the leg and Hank jumps out of the way. Bobby, what in the hell has gotten into you? <laughs> I don't know why I've made this bit, but it's really funny. Yennefer obviously has the most animations in the game. Among those are uh, quite a few unused ones. Holy crap. Looking at all of these at once, it kind of gives me the same vibes as like a bunch of the same doll just like walking in different directions. It's, it's really weird to think it's like, like don't think of these as the same person, but at different points in time, think of these as like all different dolls, but they're just like uh, copies of each other, and it looks really weird. Also, I don't know why, but there's supposed to be a line right there, right where the tip of my cursor is pointing. But for some reason, on stream, on the stream preview, it is not there. Uh, on my laptop, it is there, and I don't know if it's still, if it actually is there or not. Oh, I see. Thinner, thin lines look thinner on the stream preview, which is really weird. Nothing too interesting here. Main animations were made for walking, and that's just what they did. And from different parts of the rooms, and these ones were just weren't needed for in the game, weren't needed in the end. Oh, that looks so weird to see them all walking at once like that. Like I said, it for some reason my brain doesn't interpret this as the same character at different points in time, it interprets them as several small dolls all moving at once. And there's something really otherworldly about it. Okay. I'm just gonna like sit here and look at this for a little bit. I found the thumbnail, for sure. <laughs> I found the thumbnail for the VOD. Oh, this looks so weird. Okay. Oh, running animations. Oh, this is also creepy. Okay, that's as far back as it goes for now. I'll move it at once. <laughs> Look, stairs. That's still my favorite line from uh, National Treasure. <laughs> We're like they're at the very end of the the tomb. That's the first thing Riley is like concerned with his stairs. Damn, I don't know why this got so loud. Snails house, baby. Hell yeah. Any hoot. Dang, they programmed in a lot. <laughs> Jesus. They, pro they programmed in a lot of animations for this. And they're very smooth looking. This looks like something out of a, uh, a modern day indie game, you know? Uh, or for the end of the staircase sequences, Jennifer will always walk to the right uh, at that point, so they go unused.
various other animations. Some of these are early drafts that were later split, combined, or otherwise touched up to make the final animations. Others were just not implemented, leaving Jennifer idle and having only the text tell you what's happening. Looks like Jennifer's jumping over the hole in the hallway with the statues, but from an idle state this time. <laughs> She's tired. <laughs> this one would go well with the stamina runs out after the insecticide can has been thrown. That's probably replaced to make sure Jennifer doesn't walk into any furniture to the left. That's really weird that they managed to figure out where it's supposed to be used. That's very strange. <laughs> Looks like drafts from the similar animations seen in the first storage room. That just looks like two twins side by side praying next to each other. A pair of twins, not two twins. You know what I mean. Might be for the beverage cupboard in the phone room. All things, all things considered, this is actually super fucking cool. Also appropriate music for a horror game. Jennifer getting out of the box in the shed. See the main page for more detail. Oh, that looks so cool when there's no uh, box. It's like she's it's like she's a fourth dimensional being, just like popping out of the fourth dimension. Sup, dude? <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, someone could use these unused animations as like a custom like alert for my stream. Like, have that pop up out of the corner and be like, Jennifer has arrived! <laughs> Hilarious, if true. Or someone could just have her running animation, but her just like running across the screen. <laughs> what the hell? Out of some hiding place. Yeah, she just, <laughs> she just like, <laughs> she. She crawls out from the side of the screen and then goes forward and then to the right and runs across. <laughs> that would be really funny. Whew. Oh my god, there are so many! Loose sprites. Not use. Do not use. Now for the Bob sprites. Oh, that just looks weird. Excuse me. Bobby was apparently meant to follow the player all the way to and from any door. Similar to the game's sequel. In s what is the game's sequel? Oh, Clock Tower on PlayStation, of course. Instead, he'll just instantly appear somewhere in most of the rooms and in several other ones he just won't show up at, uh, at all. It's very interesting, though. Whew. I don't know why I'm yawning. I got, I got at least adequate sleep last night. I went to bed around 2-ish. And I woke up at 9.30, so 2, 3, 4. About, about about seven and a half hours, which is not bad. More, oh my god, they put so much fucking work. <laughs> this bottom row looks like they're dancing. <laughs> Up and down stairs. I don't think I've ever seen this many sprite animations in one place. This is so crazy. Specifically of the same character. This is so crazy. Wow. Many of these look, look familiar. Since they are just different sizes of animations seen elsewhere. Uh, 
or they are early drafts. There are also some additional attacks, like the one meant for the unfinished hiding place of the phone room. <laughs> he looks so pathetic, jumping forward and then falling on his face. I don't know why, there's something silly about it. God fucking damn it. <sighs> We're gonna look at the PlayStation 1 clock tower after this and then we'll call it a stream. Oh my god. <laughs> I like that dancing one. <laughs> that one's really silly. There is a there is a uh, version of that one in particular in the final game where he goes to stab her and then she falls to the floor, but like she ducks under the scissors just before he hits her. <laughs> This reminds me that there is a, uh, a pixel survival horror game on uh, the Switch, PS4, and Steam called Yuppie Psycho, and I beat it a couple or a couple of weeks ago, and it is a wonderful game, very fun, and it, it doesn't really have any jump scares that I could find. Like there was nothing really, hmm, yeah, there was nothing really that freak, you know, that was jump scary. There were a few things that were a little startling, but nothing, um, nothing like bad jump scare levels. Oh my god, this game has so many fun- and look how smooth those are! That's crazy! <sighs> oh boy. Each of Jennifer's friends has an unused front facing sprite. Oh, that's weird. Laura additionally has two unused palettes, likely meant to go along with the flashing bathroom lights. Oh, I see. Uh, Mary has some unused animations uh, in which her hands are raised. And... There is also an idle animation of her in the black robe. She's already walking when you see her in game. Oh, okay. Alright, this song's taking too long. Ooh. The Aether Tree. Final Fantasy IX. Hell yeah. Spoopy. God damn it. <sighs> For anyone just now coming in, I have looked through all the P all the PS2 games uh, from the past few months that I've been playing them. Just, you know, just as a uh, as a sort of theme-ish kind of, th kind of thing. Because I looked at LEGO Star Wars a couple of weeks ago, and I finally got around to looking at the TCRF pages for the games after LEGO Star Wars that I have in my collection. Surprisingly, either the pages were small and they didn't have that man that they didn't have that much stuff in it, or the pages didn't for them didn't exist at all, which sucks cuz I would have liked to see some unused content from MX versus ATV Unleashed or, M or you know, MTX Moto Tracks, NBA Street. That would have been cool, but yeah, what are you going to do? We had like uh half an hour left uh, in stream and I <laughs> so I just said fuck it and now we're looking through uh, Clock Tower the horror game unused content and there was a lot a lot of, of unused sprites and they are beautifully animated I don't plan on playing Clock Tower at any point because I feel like I wouldn't be very good at it maybe someday who knows but uh yeah, we're looking at clock tower stuff. Room objects. 
The mirror in the first bedroom has a shattering animation that goes unused. In the SNES version of the game, it is fully implemented in later ports. In addition to this, there are some unused reflection animations as well. Oh, that's cool as fuck. yawning like I'm not even gonna go to bed after this I'm just gonna fucking um uh, I'm just gonna go play like uh marble it up which is like which is like a, a marble obstacle course game and I am a huge fan of those even though they're super niche which is a shame because they're super fun anyway um but yeah we're looking at I finished looking at uh the PS2 games I've already played so far, so we're looking at Clock Tower, unused stuff. Which, again, I've always been curious about the lore for Clock Tower. There's something that's always been super cool about it, but it's mostly because I don't know much about it. Outside of the JonTron video. <laughs> and that video still makes me laugh. And a Scissorman's Ham, the Harbinger of Gout, and a Scissorman's Worst Friend. Oh, this song's, this song's too sad. I can't have this playing right now. Oh. No. No. Oh, never mind. Ugh. That, this is fine. It's more upbeat. Oh, come on. There we go. I will be playing Undertale on stream at some point, and Deltarune's one, chapters 1 and 2. No doubt about it. I have them on Switch, so, which is how I prefer to play them, which is why I have not played them on stream yet. We gonna get there one of these days. It's an unused, there's, there's an unused lamp and a rolling... Oh, it's an insecticide can. Looks like Jennifer could miss Bobby, which is the scissorman when she's throwing the can against him would probably be seen if the panic button had actually been put to use in that scenario. Oh, that's weird. Amongst the East storage objects is an unused door. Here it is loaded in the room. The event trigger at the edge of the room doesn't ex what? doesn't expect a door, so Jennifer just will just walk through it. What the hell is this? Oh, it's a moving, uh, it's a moving bullhead trophy. <laughs> that looks really goofy. He like, bar. That doesn't even look like a sound that a bull makes. Just bar. Bar. It's an unused howling animation. Oh, it's howling. A matching sound will occasionally play in the trophy room, but the animation itself is never executed. In the PlayStation port, this head is part of the background just like the others around it, meaning it's no longer supposed to move at all. That's a cool star effect. Oh, it's the dagger being thrown. That's funny. An unused green dagger. What the hell? Oh, it's a doll. Well, this doll was apparently supposed to fly into the back of the room and then return. The left part shows an unused animation where the first four sprites, two, three, four, so here and then to the left. First four sprites are unique. The back facing sprites to the right weren't added into any of the game's animations. It's from the still to be unreleased record. That was old David Riley stuff. Oh, hell yeah, dance with the day, uh, duh. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, that looks kind of cool, actually. Oh, that's, oh, it's meant to, fl oh, that's dope as hell. <laughs> God, sprite animation is so fascinating with what you can do with so few pixels. Crazy. The parrot. 
There's also an animation for when the doll is about to attack. It does not get used in the PlayStation version. The parrot has four sprites facing away from the camera that aren't used in any of its animations. That's weird, because I could have sworn this was in the final game, because I've seen, of the bits and pieces of the game that I've seen, I remember it flying around like this. In addition to this, it has four unused animations, uh, of which two are exact duplicates. Yeah, okay. It's clear that some of the bird's animate a no, actions aren't fully implemented as it never a it it's never animated while inside the cage, uh, even when it's helping Bobby find the player. What the fuck? That just looks weird. I think it's a crow. The first two animations seen here, which are right here, I believe. They, they just look like one. Anyway. Early drafts of the crow's attack on Bobby in the slaughter room. The rest are unused variations of when they have landed on their target. Oh, okay. Using different sprite and mirroring options. Gorge. The rat and crow cages were supposed to be animated when being opened by the player, but these animations never got used. The wardrobe in the phone room has some unused animations. In addition to showing the black robe, see for the below, it would also act as a hiding place. All the needed animations here got completed. Uh, like the door closing again, okay. These are mock-ups of what some of it, some of the animations look like together with those Jennifer and Oh! That's cool! She hides in there and then he like tries to smash it and then like, pierces it. But there's no blood, which I'm, so I'm not sure if she was meant to survive or not. Uh, this painting was found among the sprites that belong in the phone room. A very low poly painting. Not poly, not poly, those aren't polygons. Low sprite count painting, I guess? Either way. A th oh my god. Oh my god, we're not even halfway through this! This is crazy! We may just get done with this page and call it a stream. This is a lot. Also in the phone room, this cup has an unused animation where it falls off the table. Oh, I see. Yeah, right here. Bam. Damn, that's so beautifully animated. There's a sprite palette table that should be used when Mary is in the phone room with the lights off. When the light switch is used, it will always use the tables meant for Bobby resulting in Mary looking really weird. To always use Mary's palettes as shown here, use that, okay. If the black robe hasn't been picked up elsewhere, you can get it from the phone room. This sprite should have been visible when Jennifer opens the wardrobe, but unfortunately all of those animations were, are, are unused, and so the events are conveyed through text only instead. Well, oh my god, why does the volume keep going up? I love the Mario Land theme, though. While still unused, the sprite also exists in the PlayStation version, conferring its intended palette. By the way, to give context as to how much is left of the page, we are right here. Uh, the little, the little bar, the little scroll bar is right here, right where the tip of the pen is on the page. We are not even halfway through with this. This is so crazy. I cannot believe how much unused stuff is in the clock tower. One. A little box that Jennifer can hop into. This animation is actually used when Jennifer climbs out of the box after hiding from Bobby, but this is not normally possible since you can't enter the shed while being chased. You can also use pro action replay code to bypass said limitation. When Bobby is looking around the room, he'll suddenly turn around and hurry outside. If the box is entered too late, however, Bobby, Bobby will keep walking back and forth, forcing the player to restart the game. Damn, that sucks. 
so sealing this place off was most likely a quick fix for this issue. What? I can't even tell. A slightly different version of the plank attack. Oh, okay. Animation. Normally seen inside the shed. Compared to the used one, it has one more frame. And it uses different sprites starting at the sixth frame. I don't know how you're able to tell that. I guess going frame by frame, but that looks like such a high frame count. Anyway, one of the bushes. One of the bushes in the courtyard could have used this animation for some sort of spooky event. That's a beautiful animation. The music room's curtain has two closing animations with unique sprites. The used animations just show the opening sprites in reverse order instead. Huh. The library has two unused objects whose sprites are no longer in the game. Luckily, they can be found included on the disc of the PlayStation version. What the hell? It appears that some coffer was to be placed on top of the rightmost shelf and were required, required as a stool for it to be reached. More color palettes. The game has has palettes for a lights off version of the west bathroom. The light switch cannot be used by the player, leaving the lights on at all times. Unused, used PlayStation. <laughs> they just made a whole new sprite for it. The box in the west bathroom reuses the inner doors palette. But it also has its own its own one loaded when you enter the room and that one does not get used in the PlayStation version. Okay. Oh, it's that box. Okay, that was weird. Oh, it's Oblivion, which I will be playing. But not during my PS3 showcase. While the box palette is only loaded in the west bathroom, also I keep stroking my hair. I don't know why, it's just there. I made a rhyme by accident. While the box palette is only loaded in the west bathroom, it better matches the surroundings in the east bathroom. This is how it would look if it was placed there. Oh, okay. If the lights could remain on. So it's this. Session Disney. It's worth noting that the two bathrooms has a bu what? The two bathrooms have a bunch of copies of each other's objects and palettes, but none of them are different than the used copies. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, hell yeah. Indie God Lives Underwater. I think it's like the one independent album that they made right before they broke up because I think they ran out of funds or something. And then the lead singer died of cancer shortly afterwards, which sucks because he was a great singer. Oh, no. These shelves were once placed on the first purple west wing hallway. The pallet is still loaded, uh, well, still loaded there, but it doesn't really match the final appearance of the hallway. The second one also references various tiles that are no longer valid. That's not valid. Whatever you feed me, and when it's time for me to come down, there's never a compromise, you know it, you know it. I'll take it, I'll put it in me. 
It's time for me to come down There's never a compromise You know it, you know it I love that song. The whole album's great. Anyway, uh, these shelves... Oh, I already saw that. My bad. Wow. Unused objects reveal they, uh, where they were placed. Jennifer has a few animations for climbing over these, and it would seem that they were reworked for the shelf in the east storage uh, room instead. Sorry. Yeah, there's that, and then there's one up here. That's very odd. And when it's time for me to come down, there's never a compromise. You know I do everything. And what you got, i put in me. When it's time for me. These doors, uh, oh, the doors opening animations don't include their closed state. Uh, and since most door sprites don't appear in the room until the animation starts, these sprites are never seen. That's really weird that they would include that. Uh, like a, uh, eh, it doesn't matter. Like that one I could see being the, the side view of the door, maybe. Uh, an alternative splashing animation, which doesn't even look like a splash, for when Jennifer is climbing out of the cave water. The only difference differences are some slight timing changes on the last few frames. That's weird. What? Different colors. There are two pallets for the, oh it's an elevator, for the elevator doors that are never loaded. One of them matches the blue walls on the second floor. The cave, the cave's pallet is reused there in game. There's also a gray one, possibly meant for the inaccessible first door. Time for me to come down. There's never a compromise, you know, I think whatever you can. Cut animation frames. That's weirdly specific. Two sprites were skipped in the animation where you flip the switches. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that makes sense. Sprites with unknown palettes. The palettes of these sprites may no longer be included in their respective room sets, so they will be shown here using a simple grayscale palette instead. Oh, that's weird. Oh, okay. Unused, used PlayStation. That's weird looking. Put in me. Oh, there's one more game that I want to play for Halloween that I have on my laptop, and it's called Faith the Unholy Trinity. But it looks like it was uh, inspired by um, Atari 2600 graphics, so I feel like my laptop would be able to play it pretty well. this there are, oh it's a shower shower head that just looks like a snake though a doobie looking snaky like if like if you change maybe like change the pattern on a little bit you could 100% pass that off as a snake that's look at that little rat it don't even look like a rat <laughs> it's so silly looking a rat it's not part of the trophy or slaughter room sets so its intended location is hard to tell with certainty. Judging from the animation further down, however, it would seem to fit in the slaughter room of the cage if the cage animations had been used. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Covered graphic. When not really... While not really unused, Dan Barrows fully covers this huge pillow nest bed thing. Contrary to most of the game's graphics, interacting with sprites is actually fully present. The dead end hallways have another window behind the pile of rocks, and not much else. <laughs> well, thank you. Background whisper. Oh, okay. You just don't see the bottom of the door. 
That's funny. Background. I, <laughs> I apologize for like getting like softer and softer with my speaking. I'm just leaning forward and relaxing. Sorry, I didn't mean to tap the mic. Tile set details. That looks that looks like a fucking N.C. Escher painting. When it's all compiled together like that. At the end of the background tiles for the west bedroom, there's what looks like a scratch pad area where the left bed was worked on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's different from the right bed, the one near the lights here that is flipped in game. Mostly around the legs and the bleh. In the oh, in the end, a sprite was used for the left bed instead. Uh, gaining a row of some brighter pixels. Oh, it's... Fuck, yeah, I don't like this one that much. Hell yeah, Garoud. At the end of the background tiles, sorry for the distraction. <laughs> oh wait, I've already looked at I've already read these. Use tiles on use tiles. I can't tell the difference. Oh wait. This is here. Like, this is more detailed, I guess. Everything else looks about the same. There are some unused tiles in the machine room tile set that seem to depict a pillar like the one shown above. But that's the used tile set. Oh, I see what you mean. These two are completely different. That's very weird. Oh, that's only nine frames of animation. A whole bunch of interesting animations have been stripped of their original sprites, uh, most likely due to space constraints. Almost all of them have been... Let's see, wait, where am I? Okay, as of right now, we are about... right here, right at my little ear. So we're a little over halfway down. So fucking crazy. Uh, almost all of them have been restored in later versions of the game, although often still unused. A counter has been added here to distinguish frames where needed. Wow. Wow. Five frames at the least. That's surprisingly detailed. Weird. Two frames of animation. Bop, bop. Uh, the cabinet in the same room was supposed to be openable, but there's no way to even click on it in the final game. A floating little. What is this? <laughs> he fly. Wee. Kurobadaba. Wee. Hola. Wee. Wee! Wee! Na -na. Na -na. These look so silly. Oh, he's dead. Oh, it's a clown doll? It looks more like Santa Claus. The clown doll would have been an alternative enemy in the child's bedroom. Makes sense. Uh, but it had a, it had to wait for the PlayStation port before getting up, <laughs> up on its feet. Having only an idle sprite used this time around. So this knife in the SNES version was replaced with a meat cleaver. Oh, okay, that's that's cool. What the hell? There's just a person there. Why is there a person there? That's really weird. Like for one frame, maybe two. 
They're just there. Some of the static objects were actually meant to be used as weapons. With success depending on the use of the panic button. Which I guess the panic button was either scarcely used or never used. This would have been stalactites falling outside the elevator when it starts up and everything is shaking. If the sprites weren't removed, that is. The sprites weren't removed, that is. Uh, the reason they seem to disappear early when falling in the SNES animation is because the 8-bit Y position wraps around to a negative value. This is avoided in the PlayStation version where the animation positions are 16-bit instead. Like a, it went, went from a box to scissors. There's only one sequence in the game where Bobby and his scissors are unlinked, no longer snapping to the, no longer snapping in the same position. The right animation is from the scissors set, while the left one has its own set near some other animations meant for the last part of the game. It's similar to the PC and PlayStation versions where a special image of the scissors is used when they are thrown, however, rather than a normal animation. In this case, however, the animation from the scissors set works just fine. <laughs> look at that little rat. <laughs> look at that silly little rat. Oh, it's so silly. It doesn't even look like a rat. It's like a little blob. That's so cute. Oh, the dream catcher. That looks like it's something for some kind of a fucking Mega Man level from like the early games. Stretch. I need to back away from the mic. <sighs> Let's change up that music. I love Mortis, but I need something a little more pumpy. Yeah, that works. Okay. Oddities, oddities nuts. Uh, this, ob <laughs> this object is placed inside the shed, but you can't do anything with it, and it's gone in the newer versions of the game. Jennifer has some unused animations of her picking it up. And the text for picking up the dagger is actually among the text meant for the shed. So it's possible this is where you were originally supposed to obtain it. Living room I would love to see that living room painting. When the painting is about to cry blood, it randomly selects either the bleeding animation or a different one that uses only a single frame of the regular sprite. The cut room. Sweet. Uh, one of the rooms whose placement is randomized at the start of the game is never accessible. The door to this room is not even selectable. But the PlayStation oh, version does, does add a new bedroom to fill this slot. As stated by the developers, much of the mansion was cut due to the limited number of people working on the game. Oh, that's cool. In fact, the room list ha has zeroed out pointers for a total of 12 lost rooms. Holy shit. Oh, that's creepy. A missing zombie sequence? Oh, that's spoopy. Oh, used. Unused mock-up. Unused mock-up. That's odd. Sometimes Jennifer might find a corpse inside a locker in the trophy room. There are two more pictures that go unused, showing the corpse coming back to life. Ooh. In the PlayStation and Wonder Swan versions, I forgot about the Wonder Swan. Uh, this zombie was put back in as a new enemy that chases you around until you put her to rest with the also originally unused green dagger. Oh, that's what the green dagger was used for, and thus obtaining the cage key off the body instead of finding it laying around. That'd be cool. On a side note, the quote, a dagger shown faintly, quote, un un unquote, text shows that the dagger's location was fully conceived as it will later appear 
in the ports, as you can finally fi as you can only find it once you turn off the light in a room and see it shining. However, while there are tra while there are traces like the possessed clown doll still lingering in this version, the animations of the zombie moving around are nowhere to be found. Also, while the tiles for the bright eyes are present, there aren't actually any tile maps that use them. In this version of the game, you can't view the close-up image of the corpse until you re-enter the room after seeing the jar fall down. What a weird, specific sequence of events that have to happen. This is because the game decompresses the close-up graphics for either the jar or the corpse when the room is entered. The jar close-up only needs to be shown once, so all later uh, visits will load the corpse graphics. That's weird. Feels weirdly specific. Anyway, uh, inaccessible exits. What the fuck? Inaccessible exits. Da, da, da. Okay, we are down. We are down to here, right by my eye. Inaccessible exits! If you use the Pro Action Replay code and go into any room, preferably a small one, you can get into the Clock Tower's machine room and walk around freely. Ooh. You can climb between the two areas, although Jennifer will be climbing beside the ladder when she enters the top area on the way up. The elevator acts like a wall, but you can get past it by running into it. Into it. Since the ending plays mostly automatically, there is nothing to click on, and you can't exit through the opening to the left. Oh, that's neat. Uh, there's also an exit from the balcony leading back into the mansion. Uh, it's fully... It's fully functional. But since Mary is in the way, you can't reach it. The hallway you return to actually has a script to take you further back into the mansion as well, but lacks a trigger for it. Instead, <sighs> heading right will, will get you killed by Mary waiting off screen. Mary? Hotspots? What the hell is, an, what the hell is a hotspot? The hotspots you click on will set a walking goal for the player and a script to start. One setting that will have the hotspot specifically those right away, while the other will provide a goal and script for both the sides it can be approached from. There's also a third setting that is never used anywhere. Weird. Okay, so it's just places that you can't click on. I guess right there. While not technically unused, the sound that the parrot makes is slightly sped up and played with a higher pitch in-game. The original sound effect is a crystal clear, I'll kill you. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's, it really do be sounding like it says, I'll kill you. Yeah, I get it. He didn't scream. This game pack is not designed for your Super Famicom or Super uh, Super NES human. Oh, that's creepy. The Japanese text tells you the controller is not connected properly. Bobby's voice will be heard borrowed from the elevator sequence. Ooh. A classic debug menu. And that's it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I apologize if that felt like a slog. I just wanted to. I, just, I didn't want the stream to be less than to be less than two hours. It seems uh, unnecessarily slow or unnecessarily short. Plus, I got to learn more about Clock Tower, and I love Clock Tower. The first fear. Oh, it's a remake. Okay. Clock Tower Two. PlayStation. The struggle within. The struggle within. The power within. The power within. Okay. 
Alright. I am gonna go check and see who's still streaming, which shouldn't be that, which should be plenty of people, because it's only 9.30 or so. So let's check and see who I would like to Raheed. VTuber? It's a plant person like you, Aiden. Unless it actually is you and you renamed to Petal VTuber. Which doesn't seem to be the case. I don't know. Either way, uh, Guilty Gear Strive, baby! So we're gonna raid Petal VTuber. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I wish I, I wish there was more to look at on the TCR pages, but like I don't know what to do. <laughs> Seems a bit silly, but hopefully there will be more. Well, I already, I already looked at the TCRF page for Sly Cooper, so it's, it's, we can't do that one. I'll figure something out. We'll see. We will see. Until then, I will see y'all tomorrow for the collab with Captain Morgan, baby. It's going to be so fun. I'll get to convince the whole chat that Magic the Gathering as a game is better than Yu-Gi-Oh, baby. <laughs> Until then... I have created the raid for Petal. Uh, have a wonderful evening and good night. I was a dark, dumb student, no hokey rookie, day tripping on visions of chickens that look like R. Crumb drew them. They grew them in the royal dirt of Suffolk County's flooring with the blood of an alcoholic clergyman in his forearms. Long Island was porn stars and puppies pushing sniffles. Fit into the eighth dimension or slip through the pinholes. Zook slipped through the pinholes. Crispy the god sender who thunk over a quarter plunk to local mortal calm bender. Broke the formal squad sensor. Root down, feelers out across the marsh before it was awesome I call in car cavalry cooking the 85 Dodge Aries With gas for Huntington and back barely Equipped with super soakers full of piss And an uncanny knack for constantly upsetting pigs by doing stupid shit The kid pilot is run king dummies to King Cullen Where they holler fuck the world from the parking lot in the suburbs a couple spray cans and a little litter, but they look at us like swindlers with them Ricky Casso jitters. Uh, so fuck them a glutton sunk into the alley for props, but things will still go bump when them halogens pop. Believe, I'll be there when it happens. The shaking of the plates off the mantle, the snaking of the flames off the candle, the lady get a lake off the answers, the meeting of mistakes to their deep planning cadavers. Now it's rest in peace, Lou Peterson, whose heater sung disturbingly to further reevaluate your beast of burden's urgency. Damn, doggy, good times, thanks. I wrote your name in wet cement by the Brooklyn Banks. Activator, made a fire, made a wheel, made a snack for later. Catacomb kids cuddle a fantastic labor when the town speed freaks sleep. 
trap the traitor. He will ask for paper, say I'm an activator. Made a roof, made a weapon, made a flag per acre. By the snotty little nozzle of a latchkey neighbor. When the folk push shaggy over some debt with gators, he will catch the vapors. Couple playboy mud flaps and hell on his heels. Beautifully echoed in the pace at which he shovel his meals. Like not a farmer among us had a harvest, survived the winter. So dinner split a llama bean and triplets, pick a winner. It took a couple summers puking pills behind a dumpster with the largest Pez dispenser on record recouped his numbers once you in the soupy gutter once you in the velvet heaven where the mermaids haul him shake up at a lake of melted weapons he could dance pretty with the hooligan nation who were impatiently awaiting zookeeper facelift extra the days of your pen is similar uber ape shit we've merely updated the ancient eight bit yeah i'm dumber than a cow on a roof in a flood who's not as dumb as the watered down beef from the burgers that jumped i'm dumber than a taz on a beach chair with a martini who's not as dumb as a tap with the same scenery sparky nails pig stick mod up for all good sport garbage pale kids you not at the mall food court chase cheese fries with banaka they had shut the school down early there were bombs inside the lockers no concept that a problem we responded like a snow day and would clobber shit the flotsam to the cops that it was okay okay showed the squadrons back into their boxes like his breakfast club a hothead show no progress to the doctors and i walk into the office coughing awfully they're off and flown a parking meter fever knuckle up for loving rockets it was rain of the razor laser day of the cloudy howdy flight of the shelter melter you can bow it out me i'm an activator made a fire made a wheel made a snack for later catacomb kids cuddle a fantastic labor when the town speed freak sleep trap the traitor he will ask for paper say i'm an activator made a roof made a weapon made a flag Flag per acre by the snotty little nozzle of a latchkey neighbor. When the folk push shaggy over some debt with gators, he will catch the vapors.